I am a pulmonary critical care physician at Cedar sinai I'm also an associate professor at UCLA. Um, so I deal with a lot of uh, lung issues and lung problems. And also, throughout California, I, I manage and run a couple of um, ICUs, intensive care units. Uh, so I deal with, with a lot of lung problems, a lot of um, patients in the intensive care unit which vaping has become, unfortunately, uh, a big problem in our intensive care unit. I am not here to tell you whether you should smoke or not smoke, or vape or not vape. That's your parents' uh, issue. That's your family's issue. So I am happy to answer whatever questions anyone has, whether it's a, a question about vaping, a question about smoking, or a question about any of the problems that occur because of it. So. As Abuna James mentioned, I'm sure a lot of you and um, maybe even some of your parents smoke and maybe even some of you smoke. So what are the problems with smoking regular cigarettes? Smoking regular cigarettes, number one is the all-cause mortality. Mortality, and I know we have a range, an age range here from middle school, so about 12, 13, up to adults. So uh, if, if my talk gets any too medical, stop me and I'll, I'll correct it. And also, if, I, if my talk is too simplified, then I apologize. Um, that's more for the younger kids. All-cause mortality, and what that means is any death related to cigarette smoking, that's what all-cause mortality, doesn't matter what it is. One half of all smokers uh, will die from a tobacco-related death, meaning that of every single smoker that you know, 50% are going to die because of smoking somehow. Number two, the cardiovascular deaths, meaning that death secondary to smoking because of heart disease. Smoking itself is responsible for 10% of all cardiac diseases in the world. Okay? When I'm talking about smoking, I'm just talking about regular traditional cigarettes. Right? Cancer. Malignancy means cancer. Smoking has been associated with 15 different cancers. So somehow, if someone smokes, they have the risk of getting 15 cancers purely because of smoking. Infection. A lot of in serious infections occur in patients that smoke. Pneumonia, which is an infection in the lung, is the big one, but there's a lot of different infections that can occur. Diabetes. I'm sure everyone knows about diabetes, and, and diabetes occurs more, we know, in, in unhealthy, usually uh, obese uh, patients, usually patients that don't eat well all of their lives, um, that they can get type 2 diabetes. Well, there's also an association between smoking and diabetes. So if you smoke, you have an increased risk of getting diabetes. And if you know someone with diabetes, you know it's not the best disease to have. Osteoporosis. Osteoporosis means weakness of your bones. So these are usually, you think of them in elderly patients that fall and break their hips or break their legs. Um, and, and their bones are very, very weak and brittle. Well, smoking can also aggravate that and promote that and, and cause uh, younger people to have weaker bones. Reproductive disorders, meaning in, um, in women that are pregnant, obviously smoking is not good for someone who's pregnant because you can have problems with the baby, but you can also have problems conceiving a baby. So if you're trying to have a baby, smoking does not help with that either. And then ulcer disease. If you guys know what ulcer disease is, it's, it's a hole, basically, that develops, a, an ulcer that develops in your stomach or in your duodenum, in your small intestines. And smoking can aggravate that and make that worse as well. Periodontal disease, mouth disease. So a lot of diseases of your mouth, whether it's gingivitis or mouth cancers, occur because of smoking. Kidney failure. Smokers have a higher risk of kidney failure. Smokers have a higher risk of having high blood pressure. And then, of course, what everyone knows is smoking is very bad for the lungs. So smokers can have emphysema. Smokers can have asthma. Smokers can have lung cancers, right? And they can have a lot of infections. Emphysema is a lung disease. So before I answer that, I'm going to say one, one more thing, which is, uh, the, with all of these lung diseases, I'm going to be honest with you, they don't occur right away. 
So like Abuna James said, so you're going to smoke for about 30, 40, 50 years, and then you start getting these lung diseases. And emphysema specifically is the disease that you get from smoking, and it's almost always from smoking. And what it is is you have the lungs. Actually, I'm going to show you a picture of emphysema in a second, but you have the lungs, and you get big holes in the lungs, and they turn black from the nicotine that you smoke, the, the, the nicotine in the cigarettes. There's your answer. So on the left-hand side, you have a nice healthy lung. On the right-hand side is what a smoker's lung looks like. So this is just a model. It's not a real lung. However, this is a real lung in the operating room. This is someone who's getting a transplant. This is the healthy lung on the right, which we're going to put into the new patient. And this is a diseased lung on the left. And look how black it looks. And this is from smoking. I know that smoking is cool and that it's the nice and it's the cool thing to do right now and, and you know your friends are gonna like you. However, when you're 40, when you're 50 and you can no longer breathe, you're gonna have to come to someone like me in a hospital that I work at and you're gonna need a lung transplant sooner or later and that's what your lung is gonna look like. So the question is, does emphysema affect your breathing? If you have severe emphysema, this is an actual lung that we took out of a body. So a lung that looks like that, all the black in it, you can't breathe with it. It's useless lungs. So the reason you get a lung transplant or the reason you come see someone like me is because you absolutely cannot breathe with emphysema. And the worse the emphysema is, the harder it is to breathe. This is a, when you cut the lung, when you cut a lung with emphysema, this is what it looks like. You can see the black inside the lung. That's all nicotine. So this is, so all the stuff that you inhale in, in cigarettes, this is what it is. All right, so we agree that smoking is not good. We know that. And, and it hasn't been good for, yes, sir? So when you say smoking, are you just referring to tobacco? Right now, we're just referring to regular cigarettes that you buy from a store. So we know that smoking is not good, and we've known that forever, for years, and no one cared because the tobacco industry was making billions upon billions of dollars. So they wanted everyone to smoke. And smoking was so cool in the 1960s and 70s, everyone smoked. And the, and the higher, the higher uh, 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 wealthier class of, of people were smoking. So everyone else smoked and movie stars smoked. As the years progressed and we did more research, we realized all the things that I just told you and how horrible smoking is. So the, the medical industry was losing and the government was losing too much money spending so much money on patients because of smoking related problems. So what they decided to do is they decided to promote smoking cessation, to quit smoking. So smoking cessation became the new thing. Smoking cessation became the, the, the thing that every single doctor promoted, every single hospital promoted. And so the idea of how do we get patients to stop smoking became very, very important. And how do we do that? Well, there's two issues with smoking. Number one is when someone smokes, there is nicotine. There's nicotine in the cigarette itself. It turns out that nicotine is very addictive. And when you start, when you get hooked on nicotine, just like any other drug, when you get hooked on nicotine, it's very, very difficult to come off of nicotine. So what did companies invent? They invented, so if they said, if the problem is that you need the nicotine fix, you need whatever that high that the nicotine gives you, well, let's give it to them in a different way. One way is nicotine gums. Another way is patches. So that's why when people try and quit smoking, they're chewing gum. They, they have the nicotine patches. Um, they have lozenges, just like cough drops that are nicotine, so they just melt in your mouth, like mints, that they just melt in your mouth. Um, we also have medications. They came up with different medicines that we can give the patient to take the craving away from nicotine. Okay? There's also hypnosis. Hypnosis is a very good way that helps you quit smoking. There's also behavioral therapy. Psychologists have ways of tricking your body to think that it does not need nicotine. So that's all great. But it turns out that that was not enough and we didn't know why. Why was that not enough? What, what were we missing? How come any patient that smokes can, cannot just come to me, I give them a nicotine patch and, and they don't want to smoke anymore. Well, it turns out because there's a second problem with, with smoking. And the second problem with smoking is your brain has the habit of holding a cigarette in your mouth and constantly smoking from a cigarette. So 
even if you get the nicotine, there's still a second addictive property that y your brain has become conditioned to do, which is holding a cigarette in your mouth. And that is so powerful that that's why it is so difficult for a lot of smokers to quit smoking despite us doing everything that I mentioned for them. And then that's where this comes in, vaping. So the company said, well, if that's the problem, why don't we give them a pen th to hold in their mouth to smoke? And they'll, they'll smell the smoke, they'll see the smoke, so their brain gets used to it and says, okay, well, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm smoking, so now I can quit using actual cigarettes. So today, the majority of the talk is going to be on vaping. So vaping came out, I'd say about maybe 10 years ago now, and it did not pick up in popularity until about a year ago. So smoking, and it was this new company, Juul, I'm sure everyone's seen commercials on it, either on the internet or on TV, J-U-U-L. It was a company that came out and, promo and, and put billions of dollars into their marketing uh, industry and they were all over TV, all over the internet, so everyone heard about Juul, and that's when uh, vaping and e-cigarettes, electronic cigarettes, became very, very popular, which is about 2017, 2018. But here, I, I don't have a laser pointer, but I gave you just some examples of what a vaping pen looks like. And what's important here is that what I want you to notice is I used a bunch of different examples. And if you look at the one in the middle, that promotes to who? It promotes to younger girls, right? The little bedazzled, uh, jewelry that they can carry. It looks kind of cool. It looks nice. The one on top, maybe the one on the left, looks very cool for a, a young guy to have in his pocket to pull out and use. Right? So if you notice, the marketing of this is all geared towards kids. On TV, they make it look very sexy. It's always a beautiful woman who's smoking or, or vaping. It's always a really good looking guy who's vaping. And these are the ads that they're using. I promise you, this is not the people that come into my office. This is not what they look like when they start vaping. But again, what are they promoting? They, it's the same thing that they promoted in the 1970s with people actually smoking cigarettes, which is it was the movie stars that did it. It was the sexy thing that, that was occurring. It was the very cool thing for people to do. So that's what they're promoting here. And these are actual ads that I'm pulling these pictures from. Now, more importantly, Vaping has an added advantage to cigarettes. Cigarettes, I don't know if you've ever smoked or tasted a cigarette, it tastes horrible. So what do they do with vaping? They added flavors to it. Now let's look at some of these flavors. What do we have on the right? Cherry pie, right? What do we have in the middle? It's healthy, it's fruit flavors, it's bananas, it's, it's apples, so it's healthy, it's like a fruit. What, look at the flavors on the right, on top on the right. What does that look like? It looks like candy. It looks just like candy, right? It looks like those bottles, I, I don't know what they're called, but I see uh, commercials for it when my son is watching the cartoons in the morning. He's got like a, a kid wearing a ring and you pour little uh, juice on it and you, and you suck the juice out of the ring. That's what it looks, that's exactly what those bottles look like. So who are they promoting this to? A, an adult is not gonna care. I don't care if, I, if that's my flavor, if that's what it looks like. This is promoted purely for children, purely for children that are seven, eight, nine, and although they may be too young to use it, it's in their head. So that when they turn 10, 11, 12, they want to try this because it looks, it looks yummy. Look at the one on the bottom. What are the flavors? I, I can't really, the flavors may not appear very well on there, but it, it has very berry. It has kiwi, passion kiwi. Um, all of these names are, are things for kids. Very berry, passion kiwi, all of these things are names of cereals, right? Their names of cereals, their names of candy for kids. So the reason these companies are worth hundreds of billions is because they're smart. They're way smarter than all of us, right? They, they hire people from all over the world to figure out the best way of selling this. And what did these people do? The best marketers in the world, what did they do? Let's go after the kids. And this is the way they did it. Okay, you, a couple of questions, yes. He said, I thought vaping did not have nicotine. Some vapors don't have that. Actually, no, zero. Zero juices do not have nicotine. So that is something that they want you to think. These juices, they look like juices. But So now let's talk about it. So they told you, 
you know, that, that well, what is vaping? I, I think everyone already knows, but maybe for the younger kids, I don't know if you guys know what vaping is. I showed you the pictures of it, but basically they're devices, those devices that I showed you, there's thousands of them, by the way, that you smoke, and the smoke comes out just like in these pictures here, okay? And what it is, is you're going to put that flavor, that liquid in there, and that heats up, and it turns into a smoke, right? And they contain, every single vaping pen contains, and I did this on purpose, where I wrote, look how small I wrote nicotine, because that's what the industry wants you to think, that I'm going to get you off of smoking, off of smoking regular cigarettes, onto this, because it doesn't have nicotine. That's impossible, right? It has to have nicotine in order to offset the craving of nicotine. Right? So when you came to me originally with smoking a regular cigarette, I gave you a nicotine patch, for example. Well, if, if this is going to work, it has to have some nicotine to get over the craving. So it has nicotine. It has flavoring, and then it has something, some other chemical to make it into a smoke. Okay? And that chemical usually is propylene glycol. You probably don't know what that is and you don't care, but we're going to talk about why that's important in a minute. All right. So what the companies forgot to tell you is that this is nicotine. Not only is it nicotine, there was a competition called the Nicotine Arms War. When Juul came out, Juul came out with a 5% in, in each of these flavors, 5% of it was nicotine. So the other company said, well, how are we going to compete with this billion dollar company? So they made 7% nicotine. And then they made 9% nicotine. After all of the media and the hoopla, they went down to 3% nicotine. Well, what does that mean? How much nicotine is in the cigarette, right? What does 7%, 9% mean? Well, some of these pens actually have more nicotine than a traditional cigarette. Right? But no one knows that. They don't tell you that. So some of the pens that, you're, the, the, that kids are using, I'm going to use say kids, because, and I'll tell you why, because the majority of people that vape are children or children as in teenagers and, and, and high schoolers, but those pens that you guys are using and the kids are using nowadays, some of them have a tiny bit less nicotine in the cigarette, some of them have the same amount of nicotine as a cigarette, but a good number has more nicotine than a cigarette. Does anyone know how you can tell that? Absolutely not. I don't know, and I'm sure you guys don't know, and when you purchase these flavors, you can't tell which one has more nicotine and which one does not have more nicotine. This is, when we're talking about smoking cessation, we're trying to get people to stop smoking by using these pens. If someone already smokes, it's not a big deal, right? If I'm going to have them stop getting nicotine from a regular cigarette and put it in an e-cigarette, it doesn't matter. It's still nicotine. So it's not a, that big a deal for someone who currently smokes. But it is a huge deal for people that are non-smokers, right? And people that are non-smokers are the teenagers, the 13-year-olds, the 14-year-olds, the 15-year-olds. And this is so much easier to do and so much cooler than cigarettes because everyone now knows that cigarettes are bad because that's what the media has told everyone, that cigarettes are bad. So this is so much easier to do. So for people that are non-smokers, the fact that you're picking this up and getting addicted to nicotine is no different than you getting addicted to nicotine with cigarettes. So, some statistics, over 2 million non-smokers, meaning teenagers that have never smoked, started vaping in the U.S. this year alone, okay? The majority of that 2 million are all middle school and high school kids. Some of the e-cigarettes, okay, I already mentioned some of the e-cigarettes have more nicotine than the regular cigarette, but studies have shown that as much as 63% of, of new users and I'm not saying he's a new user, said the same comment that the young man said in the back. I thought it didn't have nicotine. I thought some of the flavors did not have nicotine. That is 100% inaccurate. And that all the commercials are telling you that. So the FDA, someone just asked me, is this regulated by anyone? It's not 100% regulated yet, and I'll tell you the reason, but the FDA said that this is becoming such a massive problem, and we're going to talk about why this is a problem. We haven't even talked about why this is a problem yet, but this is becoming such a dangerous, massive problem that they required all of these e-cigarette companies, Juul and other companies, now when you watch their, their TV ads, it's just like a cigarette container. The writing on the bottom has to be larger than any other writing in the commercial stating that this product has nicotine. 
right? If you guys are all too young. When I was a kid and my dad had a pack of cigarettes, the writing where it said this, is, this product has nicotine was tiny. You needed a, micro, a, a, a magnifying glass to see it. Now, the new law is that the writing on that container has to be larger than any other writing on the actual cigarette container. The same thing with these e-cigarettes. The writing in the commercial now is huge on the bottom stating that this product contains nicotine. Let's look at some more statistics because Abuna James wanted me to concentrate on these statistics because this is a real problem, right? As holy as we are and we come to church every Sunday, the statistics are the statistics. In 2011, 1.5% of high school students used e-cigarettes. In 2019, it went up to 27.5% of high school kids using e-cigarettes. So whether we like it or not, someone in this room who's a high schooler smokes e-cigarettes. Right? <laughs> and I, I think the people that do smoke are already, already like smiling in the back. So, <laughs> so. More importantly, more importantly, because high school, you're becoming an adult, and that's fine. More importantly, in middle school, middle school is 12 and 13-year-old kids. In 2011, it was 0.6% of middle schoolers that did e-cigarettes. That's nothing. In 2019, it went up to 10.5%, right? Now, I'm, you know, I'm not a mathematician, but uh, uh, someone who's really good at math can tell you how many thousand folds this is an increase, right? It tells you how many middle school kids now vape. And the most common reason, this study was done, the most common reason that kids vape today is because they like the flavors. And if anyone's interested, the most common, the most commonly liked flavor is mint. All right? So, why am I here? Who cares? I mean, I wouldn't be here if this was, if I was just explaining vaping to you guys. The question, and the question that you raised, is vaping safe? So, the publications exist out there, so if anyone goes and Googles, you know, this stuff on the internet, because you, I'm sure you guys are going to question everything that I'm saying today, so you're going to go and Google it. So I will tell you now that there are publications throughout the internet that, um, uh, that are used by the marketers of these companies, of these uh, e-cigarette companies, that claim they are very safe and they're much safer than traditional cigarettes because of less impurities, okay? Because they regulate more of the chemicals that are in there, so there's less impurities. So, and then there's another publication out there that exists that says that uh, uh, they are 95% safer than a traditional cigarette. There's another study that just came out in 2018 that claims uh, e-cigarettes do not have the same, and this is crucial, this is why I, I made that writing larger, because it's accurate. That statement is accurate. It came out in 2018 that e-cigarettes do not have the same health hazards as traditional cigarettes. So the companies promote it does not have the same health hazards as traditional cigarettes. That's an accurate statement. It's not the same. It's completely different, and they don't talk about those, right? So the problem is all of these publications and all of these numbers came out before any research was done. Because if we look at the data, only 1.5 and 0.6% in 2011 when these e-cigarettes first came out were smokers. That's not enough of a population to study to see the real health hazards. Now, in 2018, 2019, 2017, these numbers are so much larger that hospitals and universities are actually starting to do research. So. Although these publications are out there and in some ways they're accurate, the, the, they're not truthful. They're hiding something big from everyone. All right, so what are they hiding? All of the studies now, and I said that other comment, that e-cigarettes do not have the, ha the same health hazards as traditional cigarettes is an accurate statement. Does everyone understand that? However, studies that now are coming out that e-cigarettes have their own unique, different, dangers, all right? And unfortunately, I, again, I wouldn't be having this talk if it wasn't a big deal. Unfortunately, those dangers are way worse than any dangers with cigarettes. And no one knows that. And, to, and I'm not here to knock these big companies because they're out to make money. However, 
I can't guarantee if they knew this data or not when they first invented these devices. It's not for me, that's a more political question, that's not for me to answer. However, there, the studies now show that there is very real dangerous health risks secondary to e-cigarettes. Not only that, a study just came out in 2019 that actually questioned. So the point of, of e-cigarettes and vaping is to try and wean, patient, wean people off of smoking. So if someone smokes and I want to stop smoking, they recommend the e-cigarettes, right? Well, there's a study that just came out in 2019 that's shown that we're not even sure that they actually help people come off cigarettes at all. And that is proven by a lot of smokers that started vaping do both now. So they smoke and they vape which has its own health issues, the two combined. I'm not going to really get into that because we only have so much time. So the two combined have a different set of health risks than vaping alone. So what are the problems? Number one that I want to tell everyone is we are still not 100% sure. So everything I'm going to tell you today, I promise you will change next year and the year after, and it's only going to get worse. And the reason is these, were not, uh, these are not around long enough to know the true long-term effects. We only know some of them, but I promise you, in 30 years, in 20 years, in 10 years, we're going to learn so much more and so much, uh, how much worse this is than we think it is. So number one, long-term effects. We know that it increases the risk of chronic cough, bronchitis, and bronchitis is a r frequent infection in your lung, and asthma, all right? For patient, people that don't have asthma can develop asthma, all right? Number two, it increases inflammation in the lungs, which results in getting pneumonia. Pneumonia is a very, very bad infection of the lung. Number three, which I found very interesting, human cells. So they took human cells and they exposed them to the, the chemicals in the liquid in the e-cigarettes. And it showed that they have decreased viability and they have increased cell toxicity. What does that mean? So when I have a human cell, Anyone in high school who takes a science class should know what I'm talking about. If I have a human cell and I increase cell toxicity in that cell, one of two things is going to happen to that cell. It's going to die or it's going to multiply and become malignant, become a cancer. Right? So the end result is that although we're just doing it in cells because, again, these have not been around long enough for us to really study it, the long-term consequences, when we do it in cells, you, your cells will either die or they will become cancer. And neither of those are good, right? But another important thing, when they did the research, combining flavors, for whatever reason, was much more toxic to the cells than a single flavor. And apparently this is happening more and more. Kids are combining cherry with banana or whatever two flavors they decide to combine. So they've shown that combining two different flavors, two or more flavors, is more toxic than just one flavor at a time. I'm up here to tell you the facts that we know so far. With smoking, we have 100 years of data. With this, we don't have that much. So we're still not 100% sure what's going to happen. to. A, so a smoker needs about 30 to 40 years to have most of the problems occur. We're not sure how long it's going to be before people that vape have the same problems. But yeah, that's an excellent point. I'm going to come back to it in a second. So another thing that we've noticed is that we took mice. So why, why do we do studies in mice? Because mice have a life cycle much shorter than a human. So we can look at a full mouse cycle in a much smaller time than we can a human life of 100 years or 90 years. So th they exposed mice to these e-cigarette uh, smoke, the, 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 the heated vape, the heated smoke that comes out. And these mice developed cancer of the lung and of the bladder. Going back to your point, those are two very common cancers caused by smoking. So if you remember originally I mentioned nicotine causes um, 15 types of, or is implicated in 15 types of cancer. So far with vaping, they've, these are the two big ones, lung and bladder. Bladder is another big one that is caused by nicotine. My assumption is because there's nicotine in these. Right? And nicotine has been implicated in bladder cancer, in lung cancer, in bone cancer, in blood I mean, there's tons. There's 15 of them. So this is all that we've proven so far in vaping. Okay, so I mentioned something earlier, which is I said vaping consists of three things. The, all, all vaping pens, right? All e-cigarettes. They consist of 
nicotine, they consist of a flavoring, and then they consist of some product to make it into this, um, this smoke that comes out of the cigarette. And that product in most of them is propylene glycol, okay, and glycerol, same family. All right, those are the most common solvents used. Now, what else is called a solvent, by the way? Cleaners. Cleaners. Who takes chemistry, right? All these things are solvents. Those are not good things to be inhaling into your lungs. But anyway, so those are the most common solvents that they use in these cigarettes. Right? And, these, and again, this is probably, you, I don't care if you understand this, it's not important if you understand this, but burning the propylene glycol results in a compound called carbonyl compound. All right? And then these compounds have been proven to cause heart disease, atherosclerotic heart disease. What most people, when they have a heart attack, what most people die from, from a heart attack, these compounds, inhaling these compounds has been shown to increase um, the risk of, well, I think we're running out of time, the risk of atherosclerotic heart disease. Also, there's an increased risk in pregnancy, just like nicotine, an increased risk in secondhand exposure. So with smoking, we always worried about the person smoking and we never knew there was a problem with someone who lives with someone who smokes and inhales just the, the, the secondhand smoke. Well, the same problem is occurring with vaping. And it's such a big problem that now a lot of the stadiums, a lot of you know, airplanes, a lot of public places do not allow you to vape in there because there's a huge problem with secondhand smoke exposure from the vaping. Yes, that's, he's asking if the smoke that comes out of the, the vaping pen is toxic to other people. That's what secondhand smoke is. So secondhand smoke is if I'm vaping, the stuff that comes out, you smell, you inhale. And yes, they have shown that that is also toxic. So another important thing is these things, these things that look like candy. What's the problem with me if I vaped, if I had it at home? Those little things that look like candy. What did I explain to you? With the commercials that the kids use where you pour these things on little... Uh, candies and you and you suck on them or you eat them right so that's what the kids are doing so in 2017 more than 8,000 cases of poisoning of kids seven years old or younger they took their parents or their brothers or sisters flavored tobacco and thought it was candy and inhaled it and they were poisoned by it okay so it is a poison it can kill you by eating it another important thing which the companies don't mention to you there are 60 different chemicals in vaping pens. We haven't studied all 60. So when I talk about a very important problem that's occurring because of vaping, and people say, well, why is this happening? The answer is we don't know because we have to study all 60 chemicals in, in these e-cigarettes. So um, uh, we do know, we have looked at some, and we do know such as vitamin E and others that are harmful. However, there's actually 60 of them, and we haven't studied them all yet. So what are the short-term effects? There's two big ones that we know so far. One is seizures. And the CDC, and whoever doesn't know what the CDC is, is the Center of Disease Control, which is a worldwide um, center that if there's a disease breakout somewhere in the world, they kind of take over and figure out what's going on. So in order for something to reach the CDC, it means it's become a pandemic, a, a massive problem throughout the world. The CDC doesn't care if one or two people get sick in a hospital in LA. They only care when it becomes a worldwide problem, right? So if the CDC, CDC is involved, it's a big issue. So there's two problems. Number one is seizures. So in, as of November 2019, there's been 127 seizures that occur from vaping, okay? Not a big deal, although a seizure can kill you, but it's, you know, one thing. The other, so the, the number that I gave you of 127 ranged from the age of 13 to 75. Now, where I come in, and I'm a pulmonologist, and I'm an ICU doctor, and this is where I see my patients, is vaping-associated lung injury. So we talked, and we showed you guys those horrible lungs from smoking, but that takes 30, 40, 50 years of a lot of smoking. With this, it's completely different, and we do not know why it's occurring. So vaping-associated lung injury. Thus far, the CDC has reported 2,172 cases of lung problems and 42 deaths as of November. Okay, that to me isn't that big a deal with how many millions of people are in the world. However, those numbers are not 100% accurate. This is only what was reported to the CDC, meaning if I have a death in my ICU and I blame it on vaping, 
I can call the CDC up and say, I have a death. I'm not required by law to do that, nor is any other doctor. So these are the only of the cases that are reported to the CDC, meaning there are many other cases out there that we just, no one's reported, or no one was 100% sure if it was because of vaping, or before the CDC thought this was a problem, and so p people were dying back then in 2017 and 2018, we just didn't know why, we couldn't figure out why. It wasn't until recently that we associated it with vaping. And I can tell you that I'm almost positive this number is not accurate because I alone have had three patients all in their 20s die of vaping associated with lung injury. So I am one pulmonologist in one hospital. There's 127 other pulmonologists in my hospital and there's how many thousands of hospitals in the US and how many millions of hospitals in the world. So if I alone had three, I can only imagine that this number of 42 is nowhere near the truth. Right? It's, not, it's not that it's not the truth, it's just that's all that was reported to the CDC. That's only in the last two years. This is only 2017 to 2019, yeah. So what is the epidemiology? What is the, the, the patient population that smokes? The, the, the breakdown of who smokes? 70% are usually male, right? And it's the same thing with cigarettes. 80%, and this is the shocking part, 80% of patients that have lung injury secondary to vaping are under 35 years old. 80% of every single person that dies in my hospital because of vaping is under 35 years old. And that, the, they go down to 13 because generally there weren't very many people under 13 that were smoking. So 12 and older, 80% of patients that die every day because of vaping is in people under 35 and I said patients as young as 13. Why is this happening? We don't know, right? There are theories out there, and, and the, I always get these questions because this is what the media says. The media knows nothing. The media just picks something up and reports it and everyone reports it. The media is not some doctor that's reporting this. The media is just an outlet that they look something up on the internet and they report it. So there are theories, such as vitamin E was the big theory that was about a month ago that it, inhaling vitamin E was not good for you because they found some vitamin E uh, cells in the, in the lungs. We really don't know, right? Because like I said, there are 60 chemicals. We don't know what's causing this. What it can cause, and I'm going to mention a bunch of things. What it can cause is acute fibrinous pneumonitis. It can cause diffuse alveolar damage and it can cause organizing pneumonia. What does that mean? Who cares? And these can all lead to something called ARDS. What does all this mean? Well, here's what this means. Patients come in, a healthy, young, and I'm giving you an actual patient that I saw, so this is not a made up story. A patient comes in, he was 22, he lived with his parents still. He comes in with shortness of breath and cough. Some patients have chest pain or pleuritic chest pain. Pleuritic chest pain means that when I take a deep breath, I get a bad pain in my chest, okay? Some patients have nausea and vomiting. A lot of the patients have fevers. Right? And then you examine them. I examined this kid in the ICU. He had a very fast heart rate. He, had a, he was breathing too fast. And then he was hypoxic. And what does hypoxic mean? Is we can measure the oxygen in your blood and it was very low. Right? So what happens to these patients? They get admitted to the ICU right away. 87% of them need some kind of oxygen supplement. 36% of them need what's called non-invasive ventilation, which is a step below being intubated in the, in the ICU. I don't know if anyone knows what intubated is. I'm going to show you. And then 32% required mechanical ventilation to survive. All right? And then, as I mentioned, there's been 42 deaths. But on top of that, the other, we had 2,100 and something, and 42 of them died, well, the other 2,050, you know, what happens to them long-term, we don't know. Because what happens to the lung after this initial injury, are they going to have problems again in two years, in five years? We don't know yet. This is what a good, normal lung looks like. This is an x-ray on the left and a CAT scan on the right. This is what a nice, healthy lung looks like. This is what a patient with vaping comes in with. The same CAT scan on the right, the same chest x-ray on the left. This is what a vaping lung looks like. 
This is what a patient who's intubated in the ICU looks like. Now, this patient particularly, I chose a random picture, so I don't have any issues. However, all three of my patients, their parents, all three of them that died, their parents asked me to, when I do speak, when I do give lectures, to actually put pictures of their particular kids in my talks. I haven't done that yet. I may in the future, but I just didn't want to show you know, an actual person that I've taken care of. But I do have permission to show them, and they're kids that look just like you guys, that are intubated in the ICU, just like this, on a breathing machine. Okay? And what is the bigger problem in all of this? The bigger problem is we don't know how to treat this, because we don't know what it is yet. Right? We do know that um, we give antibiotics just in case. We give them steroids because we've kind of seen that steroids helped a little bit. All right? Short of that, we don't know what else to do. We, we do what's called um, uh, supportive measures. What does supportive measures mean? Supportive measures means that someone comes in, their lung completely does not work. If your lung does not work, you don't get enough oxygen, and if you don't get enough oxygen, your heart will stop, your brain will die, and you're dead. So somehow we try and bypass the lungs, give them oxygen some way to the rest of their organs to bypass the lungs unt long enough until the lungs heal, if they heal. Okay? So one way is the mechanical ventilation. If that's not enough, there's something called ECMO, which I'm not even going to get into because it's a horrible thing that very few people survive from. But it's a bypass machine that's a, a fake lung, a, 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 a mechanical lung on the outside. We send their blood through there to get oxygenated back to the body so that the lungs can heal. This is not something that a 12 or a 13 year old needs to go through. Right, guys? This is honestly not a joke. This is unbelievably serious. So, and even then, we still have deaths. And even then, some of these patients come out, when you go on ECMO, some of these patients come out with their brain just not getting enough oxygen for that amount of time. Not enough oxygen that they need. So they come out with mental problems afterwards. Right? It's, it's as if someone had a stroke afterwards. Right? Some of the mental problems is they, they're not as smart as they were. They're not as sharp as they were. They can't do as well in school as they did. They can't pay attention the way they did before. And these are the people that survived. These are the ones that were happy that they survived. Yes, so the question is why the brain? It's because the brain is the most sensitive to oxygen. Any lack of oxygen to the brain results in severe damage to the brain tissue. And depending on what part of the brain is affected, it can affect, that's what a kind of the con same concept as a stroke. You're stopping blood or oxygen from going to a certain part of the brain. Unfortunately, with some, something like this, it's very global. The whole brain does not get oxygen, not just one area. <coughs> so in summary, basically anyone who vapes is actually a guinea pig. It's, you're a guinea pig to the company that sells it, and you're a guinea pig to us, to the medical community, because you guys are the ones that we're testing it on. How did we test alcohol was good or bad? How did we test smoking regular cigarettes was good or bad? We just had millions upon millions of smokers. We saw them die. We, they, we, we studied them, and we figured out what was going on. So anyone that vapes now is just a test rat for us, a lab rat for us. Because we will study those kids that died, and we will, and the more the CDC gets involved, the more we're going to have patients to study, right? We do know the, uh, that it's harmful, but we don't know the extent of how harmful it is. Everything that I just told you is minor compared to how bad it's going to get. And then, unfortunately, many more teenagers will be harmed or killed prior to us knowing any more. You know, people that... So, again, people that vape are using the excuses that these companies are telling them, not logical excuses, but the companies are telling them, well, most of the people are dying because of the ones that you buy in the gas station, not my personal company. That's BS, because two of my three were from a company. I'm not going to mention any particular company because this is being videotaped. I'm not going to go after any particular company, but it is from a legitimate company. There is no regulation for age. They, no, so, so they never reported. That's the truth. She said, how can someone report 0% nicotine? Those are, so I am not 100% sure about the ones that say 0% because from all of my research, all of them have some nicotine. Now, um, it, it may be to what stand, to what point are they required to report it? What is, so it's not, you know, 7% is not 7%. It's, it's a, you're up to, you have as much, it's a range. So I don't know what that range is where they can say zero, number one. Number two is, as I mentioned, a lot of these problems, we don't know, they're not because of nicotine in it, they're because of the flavors that are in it, the chemicals in the flavors. So that doesn't mean that these problems cannot arise. 
Not, no, that, that's a good question because cigarette smoking changes your fingernails, changes your hair. You're absolutely right. Again, we haven't studied it long enough. These are things that may occur in the future because it's such a short period of time. We just haven't studied it long enough to know. Secondhand smoke increases your risk of having asthma. And, and in some people, it increases your risk of cancer. Okay, I've never heard of that. However, I will tell you that, and, and when you say candy, do you mean like the, the ones that she's talking about that are just flavors without... Uh, okay, so you're asking, that. so this is a separate question. Some kids, some crazy kids, that's very dangerous by the way, smoke actual just grass and candy. I don't know why they would do that. However, I will tell you that anything you inhale causes bad lung disease. So outside of any of this, there's a lot of things called, for example, hot lung, which is women that live in South, uh, South America <clears throat> or South Africa that s live in a hut that are always cooking inside this hut just because they inhale, any foreign body that's inhaled into the lung can cause lung damage. So I don't know about those things in particular, but I can guarantee you that inhaling them will cause lung damage. No. So everything that I mentioned here, no, it's, that's a real question, guys. That is a real question, and that's out there. And is smoking marijuana safer than smoking cigarettes? That particular question there's controversy still. Although it's legal now, there's controversy if smoking marijuana is better or safer than smoking cigarettes. When it comes to vaping, when it comes to vaping marijuana versus cigarettes, to be honest with you, the vast majority of these lung injuries, the, it's greater than 50% is from marijuana. So again, most likely it's not the marijuana or the nicotine. Those have their own problems, but it's the chemicals and the flavors that they're using in there. Of the, so I mentioned the vaping lung injuries were 2,100 and something. More than 50% of the, of the kids that came in or the people that, patients that came in with uh, lung injury because of vaping, the product was marijuana, not tobacco. Okay, so there's a difference between this and cigarette smoking. Cigarette smoking, if you try a cigarette or smoke for a year or two, odds are not much is going to happen. With vaping, it could be after 1,000 times or after one time? There's no way of knowing. It's the same thing as with certain drugs, certain drugs such as mushrooms, right? Everyone in here can use mushrooms, which is a street drug, and nothing can happen to all of you guys, and one person can die from it immediately after one time. And it's the same thing with vaping, unfortunately. We don't know how long we need to vape before problems occur, but we have seen people that vaped for every day six hours a day and we've seen you know for a year or two and we've seen it happen in people that vaped once or twice so trying it is a little different than trying a cigarette